How do we fix yellow leaves on avocado trees? Today I'm going to tell you how. G'day avocado enthusiasts and welcome to Scott Grows an Avocado Tree. Now I've got behind me here this, well a number of avocado trees, but this one which is two summers old now and the leaves aren't that beautiful dark green or even slightly reddish colour that you see on really happy trees. It's very light green, almost yellow. It's got these green veins going through it. So what's gone wrong here? Well, I have been a bit slack with fertilising this one. So how do we fertilise? Why do we fertilise? Let's talk about it. Well, plants need a number of elements that you find on the periodic table, or nutrients, in order to survive and to perform certain tasks. Some of those nutrients they will get naturally through watering and the air around them, but many of the nutrients and elements that they need, they need to get through their roots, through the soil, the planting medium that they are in. For example, most plants will be able to take most of the carbon that they need through the air around them. Carbon dioxide is what plants will often take in during the day, and they will then put out oxygen. They actually take the carbon out of that gas and put out oxygen. So they're absorbing carbon through the atmosphere, but they can't do this with most nutrients. Now, in the natural ecosystems of the world where we would naturally find plants, they don't need fertilizing because they're in an ecosystem that is complete. They've got all the different cycles going on. There is a plethora of life, bacteria and fungi and animals, insects that are all contributing to the cycles of these different elements. But when we take a plant out of its natural ecosystem, whether it be putting it in a garden or growing it indoors, we've removed it or at least disrupted those natural cycles. And so we need to care for it and replenish the elements that aren't available naturally. And that's where fertilizing comes in. But first, let's talk about chemistry, or at least the elements that our plants need. We can break the kinds of elements into two separate parts. So there's major or macro and trace or micro, minor. They need a lot more of the major or macro nutrients than they do the minor, but they still need all of them, just in different amounts. The major ones being nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium, and sulfur. Nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium being the three major ones out of those ones. You'll often see N, P, K, just me, which is referring to those three major elements. Let's just briefly talk about what each element does to a plant. There is nitrogen. So nitrogen is a part of all plant cells. It is essential in order to make new cells because it's a part of all cells. Some plants are able to take nitrogen in from the atmosphere or the air around them, but most plants need to take it up through the soil, through their roots. Phosphorus helps plants to transfer energy from sunlight. It also helps them to make healthy root systems. Potassium helps to form and transfer starches, sugars, and oils around the plant. Calcium is essential for growing new roots and to maintain healthy roots. Magnesium is a key ingredient in chlorophyll, which is the material which does the photosynthesizing or turning sunlight into energy which a plant can use in a plant, and it's what gives plants their green look. And sulfur, which is involved in a number of energy producing processes in plants. Other nutrients are needed in small amounts, but are still needed, and I'll summarize them briefly. We've got iron, which helps to regulate and promote growth. Manganese, which assists in photosynthesis. Copper, which is a major part of enzymes in a plant. Zinc, which is an important part of a number of hormones in a plant, including those responsible for stem elongation or growth and leaf expansion. Boron assists in the formation of new cells and also assists in the absorption of calcium. And molybdenum, which assists the bacteria living in the soil, turn atmospheric nitrogen into nitrogen which can be absorbed or soluble nitrogen. That's an oversimplification. But you get the idea that plants need a range of nutrients, elements, but we can't provide that solely by watering them, putting them in a sunny spot and having air around them. That's where fertilizing comes in. Without fertilizing or without replenishing the nutrients in your soil, your plants are gonna die or at least they're not going to be doing as well as they could be. And fortunately for us, fertilizing is not difficult. There are a number of commercially available products which have 
The range of nutrients that most plants need. So generally, broad spectrum fertilizers, which I use on most of my plants, will contain a good number or a good amount of each of the elements that we've just talked about. So you don't actually have to think too hard about it other than using a broad spectrum fertilizer. And these can often be available as liquids, as pellets, as powders, really whatever it is for what your needs are, you can find it. Some plants will need different or higher levels of certain elements. Fruit trees, for example, like avocados, will need more calcium and zinc, especially during their fruit producing periods of time. I'm going to be giving some specific advice for young avocado trees. For younger trees, generally, a broad spectrum fertilizer, like you would use in your house plants, is Fantastic. It's important to point out though that older trees have different needs. You will need to be using a citrus or fruit tree mix, or if you're mixing your own, a two parts nitrogen, one part potassium, one part phosphorus mix. In my young trees, I use a couple of strategies. I will use a homemade compost, as well as a commercial broad spectrum fertilizer. I'm going to tangent for a moment because I've received a number of questions about fertilizing which I won't address later, but I want to touch on just now. Some people have asked me if you need to fertilize avocado trees when they're germinating in water. The answer really is no. When you're germinating avocado seed, that is a short term solution. It's going to be planted out at some point. Seeds contain the nutrients that a plant needs in order to start growing. After it's started growing, it needs to be put in soil where it will be then fertilized or be able to absorb nutrient with its root system. So initially it doesn't need fertilizing, but before too long it will. So don't keep your avocado trees in water with toothpicks long term. I've had a number of people ask me if I use kitchen scraps like eggshells and coffee grounds in my garden. And the answer is yes, but I don't just throw them straight on my plants. So eggshells are a fantastic source of calcium. They are full of cal so much calcium in eggshells and coffee grounds have a number of elements magnesium is one of their biggest ones but for the purpose of providing nutrient to the soil i don't just throw it straight into my soil the reason being is that the elements are not available soon or rapidly after putting them into the soil eggshells take quite a long time to decompose to the point of releasing those elements into the soil so how do i speed up this process well I grind up my eggshells and I feed them to my worms. Now in a moment you're actually going to see my first harvest of vermicompost. It has some full eggshells in it because I had learned that you need to grind them up first. So that's what I'm doing from now on. And I've been doing that for the last few months, but my current batch of vermicompost doesn't have ground eggshells, so you can still see some eggshells. They will eventually break down, decompose, and release that calcium, but it's gonna be a slower process. So for my food scraps, I feed them to my worms who are then able to break down that food, those scraps, into more usable elements for my plants. Tangent over, let's now look at how I fertilize my young avocado trees. And keep in mind that these trees are still a number of years away from bearing fruit. I've got a couple of things I use to add nutrients to the soil of my avocado trees in containers. So the first one is that I'm gonna use a soil amender. So I've got here vermicompost. Now it's not technically fertilizer, but it essentially is. So this is just my food scraps that I fed to my worm farm. The worms have eaten it, pooed it out, and we're left with all of these wonderful macro and micronutrients, which are fantastic. Now, it's not technically a fertilizer, but it does essentially the same job. We just don't know the specifics, can't guarantee how much of each nutrient is in there. But this is gonna be fantastic. Over time, it's going to continually add nutrient to my soil. There's a bunch of live bacteria in here as well. So it's great for the ecosystem within the little pot there. So to add this, I'm just going to grab a handful and just throw it in on the top. Now I I'm, I'm think I'm gonna start using a little bit of this in my potting mix, but uh, just adding it as a bit of a top dressing, not too much because it's pretty strong stuff, is going to be very helpful. Now I'm not gonna use this by itself. I'm also going to use a broad spectrum fertilizer. Now you can use a number of these and there are lots of different ones around. I don't have a citrus one on hand at the moment, but citrus and fruit tree ones are generally pretty good. But 
I, I've got a vegetable and tomato one, which is one that I'm using at the moment, which does the job. So I've just got this broad spectrum vegetable and tomato fertilizer. It's not specifically for avocado trees, but it'll do the job as well. So I'm just gonna put a sprinkle on top of this one. This is a slow release fertilizer. So this will release those macro and micronutrients for the next few months, and then I'll need to fertilize it again. Need to be doing this, especially during the growing season. So not so much a thing during winter, don't need to worry about fertilizing so much then, but really important that you are adding nutrient to the soil during the warmer months. So I will add nutrient, so fertilizer and soil amendment to my soils during spring, summer and autumn when they are doing their active growing. And that is how we get those beautiful healthy leaf colors. Now if you don't have access to your own worm farm like I do, you can buy your own vermicompost, but it's not really essential. As long as you're getting some fertilizer in there, it's going to be helpful. Though there are some studies that suggest that using vermicompost in conjunction with a fertilizer is going to make it a lot more effective and you need to use less fertilizer in the long run and you're going to get better results. So I'm using a combination of both because that's what I have access to. But if you're able to add a broad spectrum fertilizer to your younger avocado trees, it gets more specific, you probably will need those fruiting ones for when they are starting to develop fruit because they've got different nutrients like zinc which they need when they're growing fruit. But if you can use a broad spectrum fertilizer when they're young, if you've got some vermicompost to throw on the top, fantastic. You'll be great. So I hope you found this video interesting, enjoyable and helpful. And you're able to go and give your avocado trees the best, most complete nutritional balance that you can. If you enjoyed this video, please do consider subscribing to Scott Crows and Avocado Tree for more avocado content. Thanks once again for watching, and we'll see you next time. Scott grows an avocado tree. Scott grows an avocado tree. Scott grows an avocado tree. Scott grows an avocado tree.